Number one, not enough rudder inputs. Students tend to not apply enough right rudder during the takeoff, ground run, and climb out to counteract the tendency for the aircraft to turn left. There are several forces including engine torque, P factor, and spiraling slipstreams. All are responsible for this tendency, which could cause the aircraft to veer off the runway or drift into the extended center line on the climb out. Why is this important and why should we correct for this tendency? Well, if you had an airport with parallel runways and failure to use your right rudder, could cause you to drift into operations on the other runway, or in our case, bystanders. Correction to this fault can be achieved through repeated explanations on why it's so important. This last clip is how to use rudder to correct for a crosswind. Oh my god! Wow! Number two, over-controlling and continuing an unstable approach. Over-controlling can lead to mistakes, and to correct for them, you over-control some more, which will just aggravate the situation. Over time, students usually get better at making smaller correction inputs to fix their mistakes. What can tie in with this subject is continuing an unstable approach. An important thing to learn is how to do a safe go-around, than rather save a bad approach. The challenging point students face is learning a safe go-no-go -no -go point for landing, and students quite often try to save bad approaches. This this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. Number three, overconfidence. Towards the end of flight training, students tend to become confident in their skills, which is not a bad thing, but overconfidence is, and they may begin to push their limits beyond their skills and knowledge, leading to unforeseen mistakes. Even experienced pilots become overconfident. So the best advice to give is always keep a cool head and stay between your skill barriers and never take a chance because it could always be your last. Number four, rushed pre-flights. The pre-flight I'd say is one of the most important steps in general aviation. You want to make dead sure that the aircraft you're about to fly will be able to do so safely and there's no pun intended. Instructors usually put pens and various other objects in places they aren't supposed to be to see if the students will notice. Usually they don't. Students usually rush because they're eager to get in the air, but take it slow and be certain you're doing a good job. Number five, not being prepared. Showing up unprepared for a flight lesson happens more often than you think, and it's easy to tell when a student is unprepared for a lesson. A few questions about the lesson's maneuvers or topics makes it quite easy to notice. It's better to cancel a lesson and rebook instead of wasting your time and money. Being unprepared can be dangerous not only for you, but for your instructor as well. Number six, keeping the eyes inside the cockpit. It's becoming a regular issue among students and advanced pilots with the new glass cockpits, which may seem like an interesting video game at first. Sometimes the information you're looking for will be easier to find if you look out the window or listen to the engine and air rushing over the fuselage. An easy way to overcome this is with the flight instructor covering up the screens to teach flight clues and to learn the aircraft you are flying. If your eyes are inside, who's looking out for traffic? And the best attitude indicator is the horizon. So keep your eyes outside. We have a beautiful country. Number seven, misjudging your heart and flaring too soon or too late. While you're descending towards the runway, everything begins to happen quicker and you may not figure out when's the right time to flare. Too early and your aircraft will balloon and float. Too late and you'll have a bounce landing. So ask your flight instructor when is the right time to flare the aircraft. They all have their own methods. So practice and develop your own. Number eight, not flying enough. Sometimes this isn't an option because we all know the cost of flight school. But getting at least three lessons a week done will actually save money because the more you fly, the better you'll retain your skills. And hopefully you'll have a little luck with regards to the weather. So my advice is get up out there and build those hours. Number nine, keying the mic before knowing what to say. When a student forgets to think first, they end up rambling, sounding completely lost and blocking the frequency. That you, um, you had, you, you. If this is you, take time to learn how to communicate properly. Be confident, get out of your comfort zone and do the communication. Practice makes perfect. Knowing how to communicate well is key in aviation. Number 10, rushing or skipping items on the checklist. I've made this mistake a handful of times. It's bound to happen as a new student pilot. I was eager to get up in the air. I skipped over one or two steps with my instructor quickly pointing it out to me. The advice I can give you is slow down. 
The checklist is important and there's steps you have to follow. Learn a flow over your cockpit and then cross check it with your checklist. This is how I managed to learn. The sky isn't going anywhere. Take your time. If you've liked today's video, please smash that like button and subscribe. This video is everywhere in the world.